Come on! Why isn't the code working? Yes! I did it! I'm free! There's no end to this place. It's just monster after monster after monster. Tell me about it, hombre. Huh? Bob's been telling me there's all sorts of weird stuff going around the hotel. Ah! Ah! What are you freaks? Oh, come on. Don't be rude. He's just trying to be an honest businessman. Wait, you guys aren't trying to kill me? The three of us? No way, amigo. Bob here is friendly with everyone. He even tried to make friends with that Timothy guy. But I'm like, he's a bug, man. Oi, relax, buddy. You know I'm only giving you a hard time because you're my best friend. Hey, what's going on with the lights? Hide, hombre. It's Rush. Oi, are you hurt, dude? We don't get many visitors here. I thought you'd be a goner for sure. I think I'm okay. Oh, Jeff made it too. But wait, where's Bob? Bob! Talk to me, hombre! No! What's the big deal? He's just a pile of bones. What did you just say to me? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, you're about to be, hombre. Because Bob over here was the best person this hotel has ever seen. He's the one who saved me and Jeff and showed us we didn't have to be evil like all the other monsters in this place. You see, Jeff's been here so long, he's completely forgotten who he was before. His memories start with flashes from his transformation and the excruciating pain he felt throughout. To this day, he never let us see his full form in the light, but barely it's too hideous for even his friends to witness. This new body made Jeff confused, angry. He felt the hot rage flowing through him. It forced him to lash out. He'd attack anyone that crossed his path. He wanted to make the world feel the suffering he had to endure. That was back when the hotel was still open and filled to the brim with esteemed guests, so he had plenty of victims to choose from. But no matter how powerful he got, no matter how many people he hurt, he couldn't feel the sadness inside. He was lonely, incomplete. Me? I remember everything. I worked valet at the hotel, taking all the fanciest cars for a joyride around town. When nobody was watching, I'd steal cash from the register. Hundreds of dollars. Back when that was somebody's entire net worth. I'd even break into the guest rooms and confiscate all their valuables. Anything to make a buck. I was the lowest of the low. But eventually, I was caught by our hotel manager, Mr. Pennybacks. I thought at worst, he'd just throw me over to the police. But a cheap, spiteful man as powerful as Mr. Pennybacks had a much darker punishment in mind. He performed an evil ritual. One I assume that was very similar to those performed on all the other entities in this hotel. He placed a hex on me, a curse that transformed my body and mind. I was no longer anything human. I was El Goblino. The transformation only made my greed worse. All I could think about was wealth and gold. It consumed me. And now that I was a monster, I didn't exactly have to be sneaky about it. I could just take whatever trinkets I desired by force. Yet, I didn't feel the same rush I did as a man. No matter what I stole, no matter how much wealth I hoarded, I was unfulfilled. It was like an awful itch I couldn't scratch. I was miserable. That's where Bob comes in. He worked at the hotel's gift shop, sweeping floors, stocking the shelves, and attending to all the guests' needs. And we know his name was Bob because that's what his hat said. He wore that ugly thing every day. He wasn't like us. He was kind and good at his job. The guests loved him so much his deep jar would end up overflowing with money. He was foolish to leave it out so proudly. Boy, <laughs> he was right there for the taking. This would be my biggest hole yet. Surely that would be enough to quench the greed inside me. Now was my time to strike. This should be it. I finally earned enough to afford that ring I've been eyeing for so long. Then I can propose to my dear sweet Darlene, the love of my life. All my blood, sweat, and tears will be worth it once she agrees to marry me.
What in the world? Ah! Hey, hombre, find your own score. Two of us went at each other like savages. This wasn't my first time seeing Jeff. Most monsters in the hotel knew about each other's existences. It's just that we typically keep to ourselves. But my greed and Jeff's rage had gotten too strong. We weren't going to quit until one of us were dead and unfortunately, looked like that was going to be me. Jeff had been converted much longer than me, so naturally he was more powerful. I didn't stand a chance. But just when it seemed like it was all over... No, stop! Bob risked his life to save me. Me, a total stranger. And a monster at that. Oi, what'd you do that for, hombre? You got some kind of death wish or something? I just couldn't stand there and watch you die. I had to help. But I'm a monster. Evil to the core. No one is that evil. There's good inside everybody. You just have to listen to your heart. Ah, and do what's right. Take the money, if that is what you two are fighting over. I've been saving it for quite some time, but it's not worth anybody dying over. Jeff and I couldn't believe it. No one has showed us even an ounce of kindness since we became monsters. We looked back at all the horrible things we had done in our past and were filled with regret. Just promise me one thing, that you'll take care of my sweet Darlene, one way or the other. She's everything to me. We... we promise. <sighs> Wait, no! And just like that, it looked like our new friend had passed. Then and there, Jeff and I vowed to do everything in our power to make our promise come true. Unfortunately, our former employer, Mr. Pennybags, showed up with other plans. He used his stupid crucifix to control us, like he always has, and took all the money for himself. Later, I found out he had already visited my hoard and taken that too. Nothing was going to stop us from keeping our promise. We were going to get Darlene her money some way or another, but we didn't want to steal anymore. We were going to do this the honest way, like Bob would. So, we set up a little shop. It was a tough business. All the hotel guests ran at the very sight of us. Nobody bought anything or left any tips. Personally, I think we're long overdue for a rebrand. I wanted to name it El Goblino's Gallery of Fine Antiquities for quite some time. But I keep getting outvoted. Outvoted? By who? Jeff and Bob, of course. But I thought Bob died all those years ago. Well, yeah, he did. But this hotel is strange, dude. After a while, I swear Bob started to talk and move around again. But I could hear his voice. He'd shift around the room when I wasn't looking. He's definitely not the same as he used to be, but there's a higher power at play. Bob? Bob, it's a miracle! Oof. Oi, don't ever scare me like that again, hombre. Well, of course I was worried. We thought you were a goner. 